Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to make a door that can open with a color code. So over here on the wall, we have some different parts that we can click on. When we click on those parts, they change color. And then once we get the correct code entered, then the door will open. So this time the correct code, it's red. For the second one, it's blue. And then for the last one, it's green. Okay, once you open the door, it's going to stay open for a couple seconds and then reset. And then once it resets, it's also going to reset the code. So if we try the same code as last time, which was red, blue, and green, it no longer works because there's a new code that we have to enter. And this time the new code that was randomly selected is gonna be red, the second one will be green, and the third one will be blue. Okay, so once we enter the correct code again, then the door will reopen. And then like before, after a couple seconds, it'll reset. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So all the parts that we're gonna be using for this door, I put inside of a model. And then I just renamed that model to color door. Inside this model here, the door is the red part. Lock one corresponds to the first part. Lock two is the second part. And then lock three is the third part. And then finally, the black wall is called wall. All right, so that's all the parts that you need and also the names that you need to call them. Inside of lock one, two, and three, make sure you add a click detector as well. And once you have everything inside of your model with the correct names, go ahead and insert a script, and then we'll start working on that. So the first thing we're going to do in the script is make a variable for the model. So we'll say local, and then we'll call this door model. And this is going to be equal to script.parent. Next, we're going to make a variable for the door. So we'll say local door, and this is going to be equal to door model, which is where it's located. And then inside the door model, it's the part called door. Next, we're going to make separate variables for the different lock parts. So we'll say local, and then for the first one, we'll say lock part one. And this is going to be equal to door model. And then inside the door model, the part is called lock one. Next, we'll do one for lock part two and lock part three. Instead of typing it out again, I'm just going to copy and paste. So for this one, it's going to be part two and then lock two. And then we'll do part three and lock three. The next three variables that we're going to make, we're going to use those to keep track of what color the part is on. So we'll say local, and then we'll do lock one color. And this is going to be equal to the number one. I'm going to copy and paste this two more times. Okay, the second one will be lock two color. And then this one will be lock three color. Next, we're going to make a table that we're going to put some different colors into. So we'll say local, and then we'll say color underscore list. And this is going to be equal to a table. So that's going to be curly brackets. Inside here will be the different colors that you want to use. I'm going to use red, blue, and green. So I would say really red. And then for the blue one, it's really blue. And then for the green one, it's lime green. If you're not sure what the color names are, then you can just take a look at a part. And then for that part, go up to the color section. And then if you just hover your mouse over one of the colors, it'll tell you what the name is. So if you wanted to use this one, then you would put light stone gray. The next thing we're gonna do is make a variable called color num. So we'll say local color num. And this is gonna be equal to the number of colors that we have in our list. And we can get that number by doing this symbol, which is shift three on most keyboards. And then we're gonna say color underscore list. The reason we're doing this will make sense once we finish the next line. So once we get through that, then I'll explain why we're doing it. Okay, we're gonna make another variable. We're gonna say local key. And this is gonna be equal to another table. Inside the table will be the code that's going to unlock the door. So it could look something like this. It could be two, one, and then maybe three. What this code would mean is for the first block, it would have to be blue since that's the second item in this table here. For the second block, it would have to be red because that's the first item in this table. And then for the last one, it would have to be green because that's the third item in this table. For this key here, you have two different options. You can either set it manually like we just did. What I'm gonna do to make it a little bit more interesting is have it choose a random code. To make it random, what we can do is say math.random. Inside the parentheses will be the numbers it picks between. So we want it to choose between one 
And then since our table here has three different items in it, we could put the number three. But let's say you want to add another color into this list later on. Then you'd have to go back and change this number. And you'd also have to change it in every spot that we use it later on. So the easier way to do this, and the reason we created this variable here, is instead of saying three, we could just say color num. So no matter how many colors you have in your table here, color num will be equal to the number of items. So what we're doing down here for math.random is we're saying choose between the number one and the number of items I have in my table. Okay, so this will be the first number in the key. To get the other two, we're just going to copy and paste. So we'll do a comma, and then we'll copy this section right here. So by doing it this way, we're going to get a random key. And to me, that just makes things a little bit more interesting. For testing purposes, I'm going to print out this key. And we can do that by using a for loop. So we can say for underscore comma. And then we'll say num in pairs. We're going to be taking a look at the table called key. And then what we want to do is for each number, we want to print it. So we're going to say print. And then inside the parentheses will be num. All right, so let's go ahead and stop here and make sure this part is working. So what we're going to be checking for is to make sure that we get a random key and that it prints that key off. And if we open up the output, we see our key down here. So our key is 1, 3, and 2. So that will correspond to the colors red, green, and blue. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to work on is we're going to make it so that when you click on one of these parts, it changes to one of the colors in the list. Okay, to do that, we're going to start with our first part. So we're going to say lock part. And this will be number one. We're going to reference the click detector, which should be inside of the part. And then we're going to say dot mouse click. And then we're going to say colon connect. We're going to be connecting this with a function we're going to put inside the parentheses. And then inside this function here, what we're going to do is we're going to say lock one color. And remember, this variable is keeping track of which color we're on. So if lock one color is equal to one, that would be red. If it's equal to two, that would correspond to blue. And if it's three, then it would be green. So whenever we click the part, we want to increase this value here. To do that, we're going to say plus equals one. So currently, if it's equal to one, it's going to make it two. If it's equal to two, it's going to make it three. But we do have a problem. If it gets to three and tries to add one, there's no fourth item in this list here. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that this value here is not bigger than the size of our table here. The way we're going to do that is we're going to say if lock one color is greater than, and here we can either put the number three because we have three items in this table. The better way of doing it though would be to use this variable here. That way, later on, like I mentioned before, if we increase the size of this table, we don't have to fix anything else in the code. Okay, so if it does run into a case where it's bigger than the size of the table, then what we want to do is reset it back to one. So we'll say lock one color, and we're going to set that back equal to one. So once we have that value, we're going to be using that to pick the color. So we're going to say lock part one dot brick color. And that's going to be equal to brick color dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put our color list. And then after color list, we're going to use square brackets to choose a certain item in this table. And the item that we want to choose is going to be equal to this value. So to understand what's going on here, let's just take a look at a few different examples. So when we start off, lock one color is equal to one. So this line right here is going to add one to it. So now it's equal to two. We don't have to worry about this section since it's still inside of the table. And then down here, this is how we're setting the color of it. So we're setting the color equal to a new brick color. And then we're using that value. So it's number two here. So it's gonna take the second item inside of our color list. So when we click on it, it's gonna take the second item. So that's gonna be really blue. All right, so I think a good idea now would just be to run the code and make sure this part's working. Okay, so we just have it set up for the first one now. So when I click on this part, it turns to blue. If I click again, it turns to green. And then if I click again, it goes back to red. Okay, so now that we have the first one working, we can easily set up the other two. So for the other two, I'm just going to copy and paste this, and then we'll make some changes. 
Okay, so this is going to be number two. This one will be two. For this value, it's going to be lock two color. It's going to be lock part two and lock two color. Okay, we'll do the same thing for this one. So this is lock part three. This is a three here. We'll put a three here and finally right here. Okay, so now we should have it set up for all the different parts. So let's go ahead and test again and make sure we got it. Okay, so if I click on the first one, it's working. If I click on the second one, it's working. It looks like right here, though, that it's not changing back to red. And if we take a look at the code, we forgot to change the numbers in one additional spot. So down here, we should also change these two to number twos. And down here, it'll be number threes. All right, so it should be working now. Let's go ahead and make sure. Okay, so the first one's working. The second one's working. And the third one's working. All right, so everything looks good. So let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so now that we have the parts changing color when we click on them, the next thing we need to do is check to see if the color sequence matches our key. To do that, we're going to write a function that we'll use to check our color sequence. So right here, we're going to say local function. The name of this function can be check underscore code. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to say if lock one color is equal to our key at position one and lock two color is equal to our key at position two. And since we're checking to make sure these two values are equal, we should use double equal signs. Okay, and we have one final check. We want to make sure that lock three color is equal to key at position three. If those three things are true, that means we have the right color sequence and we can open the door now. So the first thing we're going to do is change the door color from red to green. So we'll say door dot brick color. And this is going to be equal to brick color dot new. And then for the color, we're going to change it to lime green. And then we're going to wait one second. After we wait that one second, we're going to make the door invisible. So we'll say door dot transparency. And we're going to set that equal to one. We also want to turn can collide off. So we'll say door dot can collide. And we'll set that equal to false. Eventually, we're going to reset everything once we get the right key. But for now, this will work. So what we need to do now is every time we click on a part, we want to run this function to check to see if we got the right code. So in each of these sections, we're just going to run the function. And we can do that by just saying check underscore code. OK, so I'll just copy and paste that for the other two. All right, so let's go and run the game, and we can check it out. OK, so if we open up the output, we should have our code. So it's 312. So the first one should be green. The second one will be red. And then for the third one, it'll be blue. Once we get the correct code, it turns green for one second and then goes away. OK, so the last part we're going to work on is resetting everything. OK, to reset everything, we're going to write another function. So we'll say local function. The name of this function can just be reset. Inside this function, the first thing we want to do is reset all these values here. OK, we also want to reset all the brick colors. So we'll just take them from each section. And what I'll do is just change the numbers. So this is part two. And then we'll put a two here. This will be number three. And then we'll put a number three here. OK, so now we have all the values reset. We have all the colors reset. So we also need to reset the door. So we're going to say door dot brick color. This is going to be equal to brick color dot new. And we're going to set it back to red. We're also going to reset the door's transparency and can collide property. So for transparency, we're going to change that back to zero. And then can collide will be back to true. And then whenever a player gets the correct code, I'm going to choose a new key. So to do that, I'm just going to copy this part right here and paste it down below. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but this part right here is just for testing, so it's not necessary. It just helps you when you're testing because it prints out the code down here. 
All right, so that is our reset function. So we reset all the values here. We reset the part colors and also reset the door. In addition to that, we also picked a new key. Okay, so the final thing we have to do now is once we get the correct code, we want to reset everything. So here, what we're gonna do after we make the door invisible, we're going to wait for three seconds to allow the player to go through, and then we'll call the reset function. And I just realized up here, I made a little mistake. So we don't wanna make new ones. We just wanna replace the original values. So we're not gonna put the locals in front of it. All right, so now that we got everything, let's go ahead and check it out and make sure it's working. So this time the code is 222, so it should be blues all the way across. And there we go. And then after three seconds, it resets. And our new code is now 332, so it's gonna be green, green, blue. So there's green, green, and blue. Okay, after three seconds, it'll reset, so we'll just test it out one more time. And for the final time, it looks like it's gonna be blue and then green, green. Okay, so it looks like everything's working. And like I mentioned before, if you don't wanna do the random part, that's fine. Instead of the random part, you would just put in your color code. So it could be something like 213, and that would just mean that your code is always gonna be blue, red, and green. If you're gonna do it that way, then you would also wanna remove this section down here. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.